Hi guys, it's Mary McIntyre. Welcome back to my channel. This video is for the Claire's Crafty Corner Valentine's collaboration. So if you want to see how I made all of this stuff, and down here, keep watching. Oh, I'm so excited for this video. There is an array of things on my desk here that are different than stuff you normally see on my channel. Um, I only have Polly McClay in my collection thanks to Yvonne Williams and I saw some videos of hers going back six or seven years ago, it must be, uh, where she was making cabochons using Polly McClay and that is the only reason I have Polly McClay and the only reason I have a bag of steampunk hogs, in fact, is because of Yvonne. I haven't done a massive amount with Polly McClay and part of the reason for that is the last time I spent a weekend making stuff, it just wouldn't cure properly and it ended up really brittle. So I think it was the brand of Polly McClay that I had. I now have some other Polly McClay. Uh, again, a kind of unbranded one, but it has a different texture. So I'm going to have a go with this. So this is the Valentine's collab. So I want to make something kind of romantic. I don't actually have any of the tools required to work with Polly McClay. So <laughs> why am I even doing this? But, you know, you look in your collection and see what you have. So once I've rolled the clay out, the, the, don't laugh but the smallest silicone rolling pin I have is this hoofing great one I meant to order a small one and forgot and I really want to get this video done this weekend so I'll make do with my giant fondant icing rolling pin that I bought to make my own wedding cake will I ever make a cake that big again probably not so I'm going to sacrifice that for this project I'm going to roll it out on some glass placemats I don't have a glass chopping board. I got rid of mine because they dull the knives so quickly that I hate them for chopping on. So I'm gonna use these for the size of cabochons I'm gonna make, the, these will be fine. I don't have the spacers either for rolling the polymer clay out evenly. So I've sellotaped together four, no I haven't, I've sellotaped together three stirring sticks. So they will act as my kind of guide. And if I have to just stick those down with a bit of double-sided tape I will do now once I've I, I don't know if I'm going to kind of do some marbling like I did with this black and white I haven't fully decided yet on the color scheme but what I would like to do is emboss them so I don't have any embossing tools for Polly McClay or stamps I gave away all my stamps before I realized how useful they are in projects like this but what I do have are my Cuttlebug embossing folders and they have a positive and a negative kind of texture on them so if I push this side in and just kind of rub it over the polymer clay that will imprint so I've got the kind of floral one and I've got the heart kind of embossing thing there so what I was thinking I've got these cutters some of them are hearts and hearts is kind of an obvious choice for this kind of project for Valentine's collabs but I might do a, a kind of different shaped cut out that has the hearts embossed on it so it's still hearts but not being in the shape of a heart the other thing that I was thinking of doing is brushing the surface with some mica powder now normally if you are making cabochons from polymer clay and you are just leaving them as they are you would cut them out with a piece of cling film over the top because that gives you a lovely domed shape but if you are using mica powder to really show up the colours and to give a lovely shiny finish, you would dome them with UV resin. If I try to do that on a cabochon that's been cut with a domed edge, it's just going to run off the sides. So I'm still trying to decide whether or not I'm going to top these with UV resin. I'm thinking I probably am, which means I will just cut with these straight away. And it will mean there'll be a bit of an edge to just maybe smooth off a tiny bit so if I have a look at what I've got that will work with hearts on the the kind of embossed hearts that size I can do some maybe teardrop ones or round ones maybe a rectangular one I'm not the flower maybe a bit too cutesy but then I'll definitely do some different sized hearts as well so you can brush any kind of pigment over the top of polymer clay and it will bake in nicely so 
I'm kind of slightly overwhelmed by choice here. There are so many ideas that I have. I've also got my steampunk gears here because I thought a kind of earthy coloured steampunk heart might be really cool and be a bit different from the conventional icky pink valentine, which is not really me. I don't know. There's so many ideas here. Maybe it should be more than one video, but I'll see how I get on. I've got my chameleon powders, my normal mica powder. My oven tray is ready here. I've actually got a piece of baking sheet on there and I'll follow the instructions. I haven't read them yet because they've been translated and they're quite badly written, but I will figure those instructions out. And hopefully this polymer clay will actually bake and actually set and not just crumble when you put any pressure on it. So yeah, I'm really excited. So before I get going, I'm going to condition the clay so that it's nice and soft. Then I'm going to have a look at whether I'm going to combine colours and do kind of some kind of marbling. I, I don't know. I'll just see where the project takes me. Now, one last thing that I'm doing that I really probably shouldn't be doing is to get the cabochons off the glass. I don't have the polymer clay tools. So what I'm doing is using a Stanley knife blade and these are incredibly sharp. Don't do that. Just, just order them off Amazon and do it in more time than I've left myself to do this video. <laughs> so I will be incredibly careful with those and I'm only using that to scrape them off so that I can lift them off the, the glass um, mat without damaging anything. So yeah, I'm going to condition some clay and just see how I get going. I may do loads, I may not do very many. I don't know, I'm looking forward to it. So I'm going to stop waffling, let's get started. Right, I've conditioned two different shades of red. They look exactly the same on camera, but one is darker than the other. I've taped down my sticks. So I'm going to roll these out one at a time. Now there's not very much clay here in each colour, so I'm... This rolling pin is obscenely huge. So here I'm using the embossing folder and I just used the positive side of that and gently sort of smushed it over the surface. Then found my heart cutters and cut out a large, a medium and two small hearts and um, trying to make sure that there was plenty of that embossed design within each of them. Embossing looks really pretty. So, I want to try some cogs. I think some steampunk cogs on this one. Find some different sized gears to play with. So I chose several different kind of cogs that I thought would work and I gently pressed them into the surface. The clay was so soft that it was actually a bit of a nightmare to get the stuff back out again. These are not stamps, so this was not an easy task, but altogether I think it looked really cute so you can see up close what I was left with. I decided that I was going to dust this with some mica powder, so I chose, um, I can't remember what the colour was, I'll, I'll pop it in the description box below. It was kind of like a colour shifting chameleon powder in a sort of magenta colour. I added a bit of a kind of plumish red and then I wanted to add some pops of kind of gold colour. So I added that on there as well just to give it a little bit of contrast and then I was going kind of back and forth between the different colours just trying to blend them and get a really kind of nice effect. Once I'd done that I've just chop, chomped out some heart shapes like I did with the previous one. So I'm going to do a bit of marble on these two so I've got more of this pink than I do the white. I want it to be pre more pre bleh, predominantly pink so I'm making a snake that's kind of longer than the white one and I'm going to kind of stick these together and 
and kind of work them into each other. You can twist it and fold it up, squish it together, roll it out, twist it, squish it, and the more you squish and twist, the more marble you'll get. And eventually the two colours will just meld into a, a slightly paler shade of pink or the white will just get lost entirely. So just keep rolling your sausage, folding it up and rolling it again. smush it so that when I roll it out I'll now have a kind of marble pattern. Not massively so, oh my goodness. Of course there's cat hair in it because, you know, a lot of cat hair too. That's, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> So once I'd extracted all the cat hair, I then rolled that out. So it took three goes of getting the cat hair out, so the marble has become very subtle at this point. I then used my embossing folder with the hearts just to kind of cover that with some of the, the bigger heart motifs and just cut out two different size circles from this one. I wasn't in love with that one, but I then added some of the leftover red with that pink marble to give me a, a, some kind of darker contrast marble in there, and then rolled that out and did some hearts with that as well. And I really love how this one came out. I love the patterns that I got in this particular one. Still got a bit of sellotape stuck in it. Okay, well, um... <laughs> oh my god. Honestly, tell me you're watching a video of somebody that's new to polymer clay without telling me you're watching a video of someone that's new to polymer clay. <laughs> So once this was rolled out I went back with the kind of floral vine embossing folder and added the, the embossing onto the top of that. This was screaming for the teal chameleon powder from Let's Resin so I dusted that over the surface and once again went in with that kind of bronze colour just to add some pops. Um, just to give it a bit of brightness in those areas. Now I loved it with the two colours and I bounced back and forth between them a bit but I thought it needed a, something cool toned just as a bit of a contrast. So I went in with the silver white and I'm so glad that I did that. I think it just added a little extra dimension than just the two colours together and once again blended over it a little bit and then this time I was using the teardrops with little heart cutouts. The idea being this would be like a a couple's thing where one has one piece one has the other right i brought my oven tray up here so you can see what we've got going on that part there is not perfectly central um, but there's not a lot i can do about that when I looked at all these side by side, I realised that I really wanted to add some mica powder to the, the flat ones. I just thought that the shine was so beautiful. So I used the pale pink on those hearts, um, the marble ones and the keyring ones with the heart embossing. And it doesn't really add much colour, but it does add a bit of a shine. And then I added, it's the reddest mica that I have, but it has a very slight pink colour shift to it. So I thought that just added added more dimension to those embossed hearts. Now these ones, the embossing folder didn't do a great job at embossing the clay so I went in with a tool and just kind of en enhanced those areas just so that the hearts stood out a little bit more. Okay, I couldn't resist making some steampunk ones as well that are not Valentine related. I just want to read you part of the instructions on how to bake these. Adjust the oven's temperature to between 120 and 140 degrees, fair enough. 
Put the polymer clay works on the heating location of heating tubes. Adjust to the size of products. Roast 20 to 40 minutes. So <laughs> I guess I need to find the heating location of my heating tubes in my oven and then bake for <laughs> 20 to 40 minutes. I shall go and find my oven manual to find location of my heating tubes. I ended up baking these for, oh gosh, an hour and a half, something like that. Um, but I think they're good enough now to top coat. Before I top coat with UV resin, I want to use some of these tiny little eyelet hooks. So I'm going to use the finest drill point on my little hand drill. It's really, really small. And on the hearts in particular, I want to drill down into there because whenever you make a hole in a heart, it kind of spoils the heart profile a little bit, I think anyway. So I'm going to do that first of all. So these really tiny ones are going to get the uh, small, maybe even smaller than that. Actually, I do have some smaller eyelet hooks as well. And I'm putting them in now because the UV resin around them will help to bond that. So that's my plan. So I'm just going to slowly do that and then I'm going to do a thin coat of UV resin on the back as well just to finish them off nicely. So I'll coat them and I've got my coaster moulds ready so I can coat them and slide them under the lamp. I've only got a small lamp so I'm not going to be able to do loads at once and it's not a particularly high wattage lamp either so I'm kind of not I'm entirely sure how long it's going to take to actually top coat all of these. So I've just made a, a little hole to start it off and then I'm going to screw that's the next size. I'm going to go for the smallest. Oh my god, that's so small I can't even hold it. That's <laughs> ridiculous. Right, I'm going to do the rest of those off camera because you really don't need to see me do that on all of them. <laughs> then we came to my least favourite part of this entire project and that was getting a UV resin top coat on everything. So I wanted to put uh, some resin on the back and just do a really thin layer. So I started off by just putting it on with a micro brush. The problem was if I did a really thin layer it all just separated out and left gaps so I did my best to kind of cover it with a micro brush and it took forever but before too long I just ended up tipping it out of the bottle and just putting a thicker coat on because it's the only way I could kind of get an even coverage so I did the backs first of all and um, put them under the lamp for probably four minutes each something like that and then I kind of painted some stuff around the sides flipped them over and then started top coating the front of them and top coating the front was a nightmare as well because of the embossing because anywhere where there was a little bit missing the resin would just flow off um, it was a genuine nightmare also I was doing this um, at night with artificial light I just genuinely couldn't see all the air bubbles until after I'd cured it, so the finish isn't the best. I mean, they do look really good. I'm glad I did add the top coat because it brings out the shine, but it took over two hours. At two hours, it was it was a lot, but I do think they look really cute. So once um, that everything was dry and fully cured, I just kind of added the jump rings and cords and all of that kind of thing to turn them into the final pieces. So here's everything hanging on the tree. The finish is not the best, um, but when they're all hung up together like this, I think they do look super adorable. The key rings I'm a bit indifferent about. I love these steampunk hearts. They really are absolutely gorgeous. The key rings are okay. I just, I'm not a pink girl, so they're not really my cup of tea. 
they they turned out okay from like a technique perspective. These guys down here I absolutely love. So each of those hearts is supposed to be kind of like a a couple's thing. So you have a, a pendant and then your partner will have the key ring with the heart that came from the inside of that. And because those hearts were quite small, I've basically just added a little cog um, to add to a kind of steampunky vibe. So yeah, I really love the colours on those. Absolutely beautiful. So yeah, what I'll do is take pictures of these individually and put them on at the end because it's kind of hard to see on video all of that kind of embossed texture that I've got here. All together, I think the collection looks really cute. Thanks for watching and don't forget the playlist for all the other videos from all the creators that have taken part in this collab is in my description box. Take care. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now. Cats are not transparent, Slinky. They're not. <laughs> trying to photograph stuff, mate. Trying to photograph stuff. Have you got yourself comfy? Are you happy now? Are you happy now? <laughs>